All right, so this is a walkthrough and I'm gonna probably go pretty fast through it of a raster analysis for the dead bird suitability exercise that you remember from lab three. So we did all of that in vector geoprocessing space. This is what it would look like if we were to do that all in raster uh, spatial analyst space. Um, there are actually multiple tools that can get you to the same answers. So uh, just like in anything in GIS, this is one solution if I can actually manage to find the solution. So we are looking for space that is within two kilometers of a dead bird, within 50 meters of a road, and not within 100 meters of a wetland. So I'm gonna start with the dead bird um, and I need, just like we need a bunch of buffers, um, I actually want Euclid in distance. Um, just like we did a bunch of buffers for the vector analysis in a raster space, we need to do a whole bunch of distance grids. So I'm gonna start with my dead bird. I am gonna call a maximum distance here because I only want it out to two kilometers. I'm going to do this so I know already, <laughs> because I've done this before, that these data are projected in mass state plane, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. So when I put 2000 here, I'm doing that in units of meters, which is associated with the linear distance unit of this uh, data set. And I wanna call this distance to bird uh, 2K. I think I already have one of those. So I'm gonna call this 2K number one. Um, I'm gonna choose an output cell size. This is arbitrary, but I'm gonna go with 10 meters because that seems kind of reasonable in here. Environments becomes really important when you're creating new raster data sets because that defines the output coordinate system, for example, which I want to be the same as the dead bird mass state plane. It also defines, um, I've already defined my uh, cell size um, as 10 meters in, in my parameters, but it also includes the, the processing extent. So I like, um, you know, in this case, there aren't any raster grids to choose from. So I'm just gonna go with, the display extent because I've already kind of played around with this and I know that two kilometers from the dead bird is like about this. So this will be just the extent of my, um, my map, hopefully. All right, so let's see if this works. So what this should ideally do is to give us essentially a circle, very similar to the buffer, except that instead of, you know, just a single polygon shape, that circle is gonna be made up of pixels that have values related to distance. Let me turn these other guys off. Distance away from this bird. This is a really ridiculous <laughs> symbology, but let's just click on a couple of things. Okay, so that pixel is 100 meters away from the bird. This pixel is 882, 14, 22, and I should max out if I zoomed in far enough at 2000 meters away from that dead bird. And Pixels, remember, are square, so that means that the entire um, grid of pixels here is actually square, which means that there are actually values out here. They are just no data values. Out here, there's nothing. Oop. Oh, no, there is something because I told it to go to the full extent of here. Let's just visualize the... Um, oops, that's not what I want. Still not what I want. <laughs> Let's go to the symbology um, and we should be able to make it so that zeros or no data values um, display background value. This should actually be no data. Let's see if this works as uh, you know, that color. Uh, oh, no data is right here. Whoops, my bad. So it's actually, I'm going to display my no data as green. So that gives me a sense of, right? So you can see the extent of the pixel. There's nothing out here. If I click on here, these are all no data values because they're outside of that two kilometer. And why is it this weird rectangle? Because that's what I was zoomed into at the time for my map display. So maybe a little larger than I actually needed. All right, so that's one Euclidean distance. I still like those parameters. Those work pretty well for me. Now let's do the road one. 
Um, and in this case, we'll do it distance to road, and that's going to be 50 meters. So in this case, I want it to be 50 meters. Here's where that cell size does start to make a difference, right? If I had chosen a cell size of 100 meters, I'm not going to get a very good definition of 50 meters here. I'm leaving all of the environments exactly the same because I want these grids to overlap each other exactly. I want every pixel to line up perfectly to snap to the corners of each of those different pixels. Um, so here are all of my roads also with this horrendous <laughs> symbology. Uh, and then lastly, I've got my distance to the wetlands. So I'm going to do those 100 meters from the wetlands and I'm going to call this wet 100. And that should give us our distance to wetlands. And so those are all sort of parallel to all of the buffers that you would have done in um, geoprocessing of vector data to, to polygons. Lovely. All right, so we don't actually need any of our original data anymore because now we have a bunch of raster grids that um, overlap. So remember that there are values everywhere from uh, no data to you know, 100 in this case. Uh, let's see, is it actually no data in these ones? This is a no data can be a concern, right? So this is no data out here. So these areas of no data are actually ones that I want to keep, right? So actually what I want is for all of my no data to be ones because that's far from a wetland. And anything that has a value from you know, up to 100, I want those to actually be zeros because those are uh, false. Those are areas that I don't want to be spraying. So I can use my reclassify tool. I can also use raster calculator. Um, Reclassify tends to be a little bit more intuitive. Raster calculator tends to be uh, faster if you can figure out how to use it, <laughs> I guess. So let me start with the distance to the dead bird. Um, so I want to add whatever all of the values are. So here's all of my values. Um, this becomes a royal pain in the ass, right? If you are typing all of these different things in, I can also ideally classify things um, based on whatever I want to do, manual interval, I haven't done this for a while. Um, and I guess it's not gonna let me change the number of classes here. Why not? There we go. Whoop. And so what I actually want is everything, this is my dead bird, I want everything that's less than 2,000. And then I guess I actually just want one here. Yikes. Let's see what happens if we just do. Okay, so everything that's less than 2,000. Zero to 2,000, I want that to be a value of one. Uh, everything that's no data currently is greater than 2000, right? So I'm actually gonna change that to zero because it's not no data. It's actually, and we should be looking at this one because this is the one that we're dealing with. It's actually not no data, it's false. It's far away from where we want to, to spray, right? Um, so this is bird uh, suitability. So what this should do is take all values between zero and 2000 and give us a value of one. True, those are areas that we would ideally like to spray. Everything that was previously no data outside of that will get a value of zero or false. Those are areas that we don't need to spray. And so it should be a binary output data set of just ones and zeros. Let's see if that actually happens. Oh, beautiful colors. Good job, GIS. All right, so when I click on this, we should get a value of one, true, within two kilometers, uh, zero, false, outside of two kilometers. All right, so we got bird suitability. Next one we want to do is our, let's do our road suitability. And I want to do classification for the roads to, let's see if, okay, so one quantile also gives us 50. So 0 to 50 are areas that are true, right? Those are areas that we can spray, we can actually reach. 
areas that are outside of zero to 50 are false. So even though they're, and I should, I'll turn this off and we'll go back to the road distance. Even though um, there are no data in this original distance grid, they actually do have a value. It's not unknown, it's zero. It's areas that I can't reach. So I'm gonna call this road suitability. And then that should give me probably similarly green and purple <laughs> output of true for all the areas that are 50 meters from a road and false for all of the areas that are further away. Oh no, we've got this nice yellow. Okay, so zero, far from a road, one close to a road. Cool. All right, so the wetlands are gonna be a little bit different, right? Because this is the opposite of the other ones. Instead of wanting to keep the areas within 100 meters of a wetland, um, we instead want to exclude those areas. So everything that's 100 meters away from a wetland, these are areas that are actually false, right? We're not allowed to spray in those areas. And these areas that are outside that are currently no data, those are areas that are actually true. I know that these are areas that I'm allowed to spray, these areas that were far from wetlands. So I'm gonna call this wetland suitability. Um, and again, the output from this should be ones and zeros where I get ones true far from wetlands, zeros false close to wetlands. Beautiful, beautiful colors. All right, so I could then, you know, I can like modify these and make them uh, no color and stuff so that you can kind of see through stuff to whatever is behind. So I can kind of see the roads. I can also turn this off um, so that you can kind of see what's behind. But ultimately what I'm looking for are the areas that are true in all of these, right? So the overlap of the green where the, uh, where the blah, um, yellow <laughs> overlaps. The green, it, they're actually, uh, yes, I think this is right. Um, and then the wetlands are hopefully these areas that are not within 100 meters of a wetland, whatever that was. So actually you can't even see the areas that we want to spray because they're true. It's like under the purple <laughs> basically right now. I did it the wrong symbology. But we did it the other way and maybe we could see the, oops, back in there. Then maybe we could sort of see through. Okay, so it's actually the yellow that's overlapping the green behind this red is a better way to look at it. Okay, so what I'm looking for, the output of this are the areas that are one far from wetlands, one close to roads, one within two kilometers of the dead bird, right? So I want the overlap of one and one and one. So that is my lovely raster calculator. And I need to make sure that I have the right things here. So I want what suitability. I want my output to just be ones and zeros. So I can either, like it actually doesn't matter, you'll get the same result. I can either use an and, a Boolean and, uh, or I can multiply them because it'll give me one times one times one will give me one, one and one and one. Those are all true. Still give me one. So. I'm just going to use one. You can try it within multiply and see if I'm a liar. So wet suitability and road suitability and bird suitability. Call this total suitability. Let's see if it works. And because I set my environments early on so that all of these were the same as my map display, I should end up with an output raster at the end that is, you know, it's gonna have some zeros outside of that core area where all of the ones overlap. Um, but, uh, so it's gonna look bigger, right? It's not just this part. Um, but ultimately, if I'm just interested in the green things, <laughs> then, uh, then that's all I care about. I can make this, you know, no color. 
Blah. Too many clicks. No color. Let's just look at green. Thanks. Lovely. All right, so then last piece I'll do is what if I wanted to know the area of this thing? Well, remember there's no calculate geometry when you're dealing with raster. So instead, what I need to do is open my attribute table, um, which is only going to tell me a count of whatever numbers I have in here. So there are two, one, five, seven, five uh, pixels with a value of one. I know that my pixels were 100 meters squared. So that gives me a total area of something like 2.16, I guess, 2.1575 square kilometers, which is larger than what you got with the vector analysis, right? It's a little different than what you got with the vector analysis. That's because of our choice of pixel size. So if I wanted to be more precise, then I would have used a smaller pixel size, like one meter or something like that, instead of 10 meters. If you go smaller and smaller and do this process again, you should find that you'll get the same answer for your polygons as you do for your raster. So a little bit of trade-off in terms of data file size and processing speed, faster to process, data file size is a little smaller with raster, um, but we don't get the same precision unless we go to that really high resolution. So hopefully that quick walkthrough was helpful. You can use the same data and I'll post them below, um, the same ones that we used for lab three.